my name is Tobin. I'm a researcher from mechanical engineering, and I'm here to say some words about thermal energy on behalf of Frederick Kaglin, who could not be here today. Um, I'm working within heat pump technology and energy system integration, and I'm also one of the first masters from the education. Um, so I was thinking how to present this to you, and uh, maybe the education changed completely since I had it, but anyway, I'll give it a go. Uh, one of the very well-known professors uh, in this field from Denmark, uh, Professor Henrik Lund, he uses this picture when he's talking about the smart energy system. And uh, I was thinking how to present to you what we do at thermal engineering. So we do all in the middle. That's pretty much it. We have uh, different components, and I'm not going to present all of them here today, of course. But uh, there's anything from combustion engines to industrial to different power plant types, heat pumps and refrigeration, electrofuels, biorefineries. We also do some fuel storage, electricity storage, but that's not maybe not the one you know. And we do some thermal storage. And then we have a little bit something that does not fit in this graph, but yeah, it's there now. So I'll, I've taken three uh, examples of what we do. And uh, this is a brand new project which just, which just started this year. It's uh, to do with two-phase cooling of power modules. And it's, it's a little bit special project because typically what we do is something about power, uh, some thermal cycle. But here it's mainly about the heat transfer uh, to get the heat away from the power module. And the uh, benefit is that we can uh, decrease the area, but get a higher current rating and a higher lifetime of the components by using this better heat transfer mechanism. You could use that in wind turbines, you could use it in electrical cars, or even in your computer. We also do something uh, a little bit different. We do something about producing liquefied uh, natural gas on the shores of Denmark. So what you need to do is to make a, a cooling system. And uh, yeah, you can see some of the basic layout here, but you have, to, of course, to get down to some low temperatures. And using a mixture of refrigerants, we can actually make a system which is quite effective. So from having a system where you typically buy your liquefied natural gas in Belgium, we can now have this system put on the shores and produced directly to the ships with the Danish natural gas. And then something about electrification and heat pumps. So I guess you know how a heat pump looks like. At least there are some different producers and they pretty much all look the same. This is the one that we have installed in Nohau. Um, and uh, it's a quite small one, but we also work on bigger ones, something like five megawatts. They then, when they get to this size, you can do a lot of different tricks to get performance improvements. And one of the tricks is to make a quite complex heat exchange network. And that's some of the research that we have contributed with to a project. So here we are currently building two five megawatts heat pumps. The one with this layout uses sewage water. Then we also, part of this uh, Energy Lab Know-How project that was mentioned earlier, with also CIS being a contributor. Um, and here it's mainly about the flexibility of different components. So, yeah. That was what I wanted to say. Thank you. Is there one or two questions for Torben? No? Then we will move on to Yen.